Good morning and welcome back to our leadership empowerment session at Spearpoint Training Institute. <clears throat> Today will be our last session for 2023 and it's also um, the last session of the series on the laws of leadership and today we're going to discuss the last two laws the laws of sacrifice and the laws of dependability uh, i must apologize for starting a little bit late this is thanks to s common load shedding between the generator and um, the load shedding but we are back and we are just five minutes late on our session so this morning I'm going to discuss two laws and I, and I know these two laws are the most difficult laws to um, keep in our lives. The law of sacrifice and the law of dependability. When we look at the law of sacrifice, <clears throat> there are things we need to know about this law. There's no real success without a sacrifice. If you want to go up in leadership, if you want to improve your leadership skills and capacity, you need to make certain sacrifices. I remember years ago when I was doing my doctorate degree, um, there were days that I have to do research, do writing, setting aside hours to write my, my dissertation for both my doctorates. Whilst others were relaxing, watching TV, doing other things, I, have to, I had to make the sacrifice to achieve my uh, academic qualifications. And this is applicable to all facets of leadership. If you believe in something, then you will sacrifice. The question we need to ask ourselves, am I willing to die for what I believe in? That is the sacrifice, the level of sacrifice that we must pursue in our life. If we, as the vision carriers, as the visionaries, are not willing to make a sacrifice, how will those that we are leading, how will they then make a sacrifice if we don't want to make the same sacrifices and even more? So leaders are usually asked to give up more than their followers why because we have to walk in front we have to set the pace and if you want to set the pace the pace must be quicker and faster than the followers so needless to say you have to make a greater level of sacrifice to make room for others to make a sacrifice as well so if you want to keep ahead Stay ahead. Make the sacrifices. And please don't hang the sacrifice on the big clock as a memorial to others. No. You just set the example. You lay down certain things. Um, you are early. We need to be. Be there the first. Be there the last to leave. And this is part of sacrifice. Study, improve your competency levels, improve your skills capacity so that you can show others the way forward. And you must keep up staying up. You must keep on doing this. If you've made a sacrifice early in your leadership, it doesn't, doesn't mean you have done your part now now you'll have to sacrifice every, anymore now every new level of leadership requires different sacrifices you have to make so let the sacrifice you make not be mournful but the sacrifice must be joyful because you believe in what you're doing the higher the level of leadership the greater is the requirement for sacrifice the greater level of sacrifice is required of you as a leader so if you want to stay at this level sacrifice on this level if you want to move up to a higher level sacrifice more and a leader will always live a sacrificial life sacrificing for the dream sacrificing for the vision 
sacrificing for others, making room for others is sacrificial. And do this with a joy in your heart, not with a long face, not with a basset face, the basset dog, the droopy ears and the long face, and it is tough to be a leader. No. Set the example. Be joyful. Be passionate. Because if you are passionate, no sacrifice is too big. No sacrifice is too high if you are passionate in what you believe. So, in this law of sacrifice, there are certain principles that we need to apply. Certain leadership principles that must be part of our lives. The way up is the way down. The world will tell you, no, 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 this is not how it's supposed to work. This is how it's supposed to work. The ultimate form of leadership is servanthood. We can never outgrow servanthood. If we can set the example of sacrificing our status to serve, how much more will the followers also sacrifice to serve others? So if you want to achieve success, sacrifice. If you want to achieve a greatness in your life, serve others. And as I've said before, the greatest book on examples of leadership, you spell it B-I-B-L-E, the Bible. And the best example to follow is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He served as the Son of God. He washed the feet of His disciples. He was the first to serve. He was the first to set the example in following or in serving others. How much more must we serve? Love the people. If you love people, you will not mind serving them. The second principle I want to quickly mention is giving. We must not give to receive. We must give because we love. We appreciate. We adore. We respect. This is why we give our time. We give our knowledge. We give our resources. And if necessary, give finances. Invest that in others. It is not giving it away. It is investing in the future of those that are following you. And by investing in their future, you are investing in your own destiny. You are investing in your dream. A leader is therefore a giver. And people say, oh, giving is money. No, it's more than money. It's giving your life. Giving up your comfort zone. Giving up your rights. And making a sacrifice about your responsibilities. The third thing, surrender. If you want to live in victory, surrender. Dr. John Maxwell taught us that unless the desire in you dies to lead, you're not ready to lead. If your desire to lead is still prominent in your life, then you will not give up. You will not sacrifice. You will not surrender because it's my right as a leader. But if you sacrificed, if you have given up that rights and the desire to lead, you will lead from a position of servanthood. So by losing certain things in your life, you are gaining a position in the future. The Bible tells us, cast your bread upon the water and after many days it shall return unto you. In other words, when we give, we are sowing into our destiny. And when we reach that place, the harvest will be waiting for us. So if you are investing yourself in leaders and emerging leaders, you will find them ready for the new season when you reach the new season. And this is by giving. 
By giving your gain. In being the last, you become the first. I've said it now just at the beginning of the session. When, you, when, you be, when you're at work, be the first to arrive at work. When you leave, be the last to leave. When there's a requirement for extra work to be done, be the first. You volunteer. And you shall be surprised on how many other volunteers you will have. Not everybody will volunteer. Not everybody will embrace that sacrifice. But that's fine. When promotion comes, you know who were willing in the past when there was no promotion, no increase, no status. And they are the people that have sacrificed for their destinies. They have sown their time and their effort in their comfort zones. And when the promotion is due, they are there. Promotion is waiting for them in their future. Die in yourself. Die in your opinions. How can we be so opinionated today? When you listen to people, they are very opinionated, very critical, very cynical. When you look at our nation, very few people have good things to say about our future. But our future is in the hand or in the hands of those who are willing to make a sacrifice. We have seen over the past 20 odd years, 27 years, how people were not willing to make a sacrifice. Not all, but but some, the most. Next year is the time of our elections again. Look for the leaders that have that qualify according to what I've just said as leaders follow them vote for them because they will serve they will surrender they will sacrifice they will lay down they will invest in the people a leader is only as good as his followers look for leaders who has died to self and as, uh, as a rose for those that they are leading. Letting go. Let go of things in your life that are holding you back. Let go of the hurts. Let go of your past disappointments and failures. Let go of the things that tries to write your future but actually belongs in your past. Embrace the things. Embrace the people that builds your future. Yes, sometimes building your future comes in the form of correction. Sometimes it comes in the form or most of the time it comes with an overall. Something we have to wear as a sign of our servanthood. We like the status, we like the salary, we like the titles, we like the corner office. But when it comes to sacrifice, we don't want it. Because we have sacrificed to get here. Why must we sacrifice now? It's somebody else's turn to sacrifice. You will never outgrow a sacrifice. You will never outgrow servanthood. In serving, you become better in your lifestyle. It is the key that will unlock humility. Because pride will bring you down. Pride will destroy you. So let us run after these things, even if it's painful. It is sacrificial. And here are six, uh, uh, um, six habits that we must cultivate in our life. Appreciate timing. There's a time to sow, there's a time to reap. There's a time to laugh, there's a time to cry. There's a time to sacrifice. There's a time to bring in. There's a time for everything. The right thing at the wrong time is still the wrong thing. The right thing at the right time brings us success. So we as leaders, we, will, we need to learn timing and, 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 and 
what timing asks of us. So put people first. This is your most valuable resource in your organization is people. Money will, we can get, products we can get, good quality of people are very, very scarce. So value them, appreciate them, show that to them, pay them well. If you pay peanuts, you, you will not get the best. And raise the standard of requirements for leadership. Don't put somebody in a position of leadership if they don't qualify. It's no good to them and it's no good to the organization. It will only frustrate you and affect the organization negatively. Learn the habit, number three, learn the habit of giving. I'm not going to say more about giving. I've elaborated quite a bit just now. Learn to enjoy the things without thinking you own it. We don't own people. People are not my property. They are, they are the resource. A very, a very valuable resource that I need to cherish. I need to look after. I need to protect. Because if they leave, I'm alone. And one is too small a number for greatness. We need people in our life to make a big dream come a reality. And I know not all of us are Christians that are watching, but this is what I do. Continually thanking God for His blessings. If He lifts His finger of grace over my life for one moment, I'm in dire straits. I stress. I fear. And I wonder if things will ever turn out to the good. And number six, the last habit. Maintain an internal perspective. Maintain a vision in the future. Because, a friend of mine as he has said, I look much better in the future than I look right now. We are seeing only the now. We are complaining about the now. We are negative about the now. Don't build your life on the now. It's merely the vehicle that will take you to your future. Have your eyes on, on the future. Have your eyes set on the things that are ahead of us. That will motivate you. That will energize you. That will give you a new perspective of what can be achieved. Don't allow the failures of the past to tell you you cannot. I've read this morning on uh, Colonel Sanders of KFC. He says the fact that it takes long for your success doesn't make you a failure. He started KFC at the age of 65 and today it is an international brand of a man that believed in the future. At the age of 65 his dream was established and today he's not even alive anymore and new KFCs are being built and established continually globally your dream will outlast you your dream will be longer and greater than our lifespan that is a legacy and it all boils down to a sacrifice there is no success without sacrifice nothing is a sacrifice unless it costs you something. A sacrifice you normally feel it on, on your body, in your mind, in your pocket. It costs you something, costs you uh, comfort zones. Effective leaders value sacrifice. 
successful leaders encourages his followers to, to live a sacrificial life. And the last thing I want to say before I go to the next law, everything you gain is something that you have lost. There's no gain without losing something behind. You cannot enter into a new door unless you close the door behind you. It's like uh, sliding doors at the malls, especially in, in, in the colder regions. The one door, the inside door remains closed while the outside door is open so that you can enter and close the door so that the front door can open up that the cold wind will not enter the mall and in the same way as you exit first the one door then you stand in the middle and then the other door we cannot achieve success in our lives unless we sacrifice first that is the, the answer to success and this is the law of sacrifice and many leaders don't want to get to this place but that's the only place to be for greatness the second law I want to touch on and the last one in this 12 part series is the law of dependable dependability how reliable are you how reliable am I is my yes my yes is my no my no can people fully rely on us without a word says I promise without signing a contract After we have tried to raise our children in that way we have never made a promise to our children that we cannot keep I would rather say I don't know I'll try my best but they know if I said this is it this is it it will come to pass so be slow to make a promise but be quick to serve be quick to sacrifice become dependable I want to give you five characteristics or five elements for dependability and all five of these elements are within our grasp it lies within our ability of decision making it's not something hoo-ha it's not something supernatural it's something we have to do the first thing is character let your yes be your yes let character define who you are competencies two different things I can be competent without character then my competency will lack because my character will sustain so character competencies and then from competencies the third element is commitment be committed to the dream. Be committed to the people. Be committed in sacrifice. Be committed in everything you do. And that commitment will lead to the fourth element that is consistency. Do the right things right every time. Even if it's uncomfortable. Even if it costs you something. Be consistent. And that will result in cohesion, unity, power. And all of this leads to dependability. And as you see, it's not something I can lay my hands on you and you pray and wow, you receive it. No, it's something we have to decide, work on it, develop it and make it part of our life. So if that is the case, Anybody can have these five elements. Anybody can be dependable. It all depends on my willingness to do it. So every leader must know and follow character. Character is more than talk. Anybody can talk. 
You get people who has got a gift to talk, but their character lacks. Talent is a gift, but character is a choice. We cannot ask for a certain talent, but we all can have character. Character will bring a lasting influence. My talent might impress people. They might be excited about my talents. But my character will last longer than my talents. I've always said, rather give me less talent than people, but more dependable people. We must not work towards commitment. We must not work towards character. We must not work towards com competencies. We must not work towards consistently uh, consistency. We must work from it into the, into the future. Leaders cannot stay above the limitations of their character. We must outgrow. We must increase our capacities. We must increase our character. And we can never say, my character is now 100%. No, it's something that needs constant adjustment, constant tweaking. So here are a few practical steps to take if you want to build teamwork based upon these things. Keep the vision clear. Have it in front of you. Cast it constantly. How do you know people have grasped the vision? They will talk at the tea table about the vision. They will talk about the vision about ours, not his or the company's. They will say, we and us. Pray for each other. Even if your followers are not believers, still pray for them. Because you need the wisdom. You need the discernment. You need to develop the character. You need all these things. God says, if you lack any wisdom, pray for me. He will help you. Communicate with honesty and communicate often, clearly. Put it in writing so that everybody can see it. Nobody can say, I did not know. So communicate it. The, the, the verbal communication is good, but it gets twisted and misunderstood and misinterpreted. Celebrate people. Celebrate their successes. Celebrate their achievements. And sharing the glory in the victory with them. Not just the sacrifices, even the victories. And if possible, Give them some rewards as well. Even if it's a once or bonus. But share with them. Don't just gather everything for yourself in the time of victory. Provide with your team with resources. Giving them the abilities. Position each player on your team according to their strengths. Remember the law of teamwork we have discussed today. Measure your progress towards the goal. Make adjustments if necessary. Convince your team that they are the best. And if they're not the best, it's your and my responsibility to make them the best. They can only do what we allow them to do. They can only achieve what we empower them to achieve. Create room for them and give them the tools to achieve it. Don't blame the team blame the leader. Never make excuses for setbacks. Acknowledge if you've made a mistake. Yeah, but people will lose uh, respect for me. No, they will actually gain respect for you. If they can see, you can also acknowledge a mistake. Admit to failures and find solutions. And now lastly, 10 points, 10 things I quickly want to mention, then I'm done with this series. Action points for dependable team players. Share a vision, set goals, work together, earn their trust. How do you earn their trust? Show them the way, 
lead in the way. Be become dependable. Become reliable. Number five, identify strengths. If you know their strengths, you know your strengths, know their weaknesses, know your weaknesses, you know what you're working with. Number six, complement weaknesses. So how can I starve my weakness? How can I take a person out of a position where they cannot operate and rather put somebody else there, which is the other these things? Communicate well. Forgive freely and quickly. Number eight. Have mutual benefits. So the victory must be the credit to everybody else. And lastly, finish strong. We are at the end of 2023, which was a tough, tough and challenging year. Even us in ministry, it was tough. In my publishing house, there were times that we were challenged. But we are ending strong. We never give up. We will run with fire. And I will ignite others' passion through my passion. I want to say thank you very, very much for the past 12 weeks that you have taken the time out of your busy schedules to watch these videos. I believe these videos were beneficial to you. And I want to ask you, if you have benefited, if you have benefited from any of these videos or more of them, please send me a message. Say, man, this was good. I learned something. And if you may, tell me which law was the most influential in your life. And then I want to say to you, you can use this material in your own training sessions with your leaders. They are available on my Facebook page. They are also available on my YouTube channel. Go to my YouTube channel. Subscribe to it. Watch the videos. Share it with others. And next year, in the middle of January, we will be back um, with these training sessions. We are taking now a month's break from training. But it's not to say that's not important. And you are still welcome to contact me if you have any questions. And remember, I'm available, I'm there for you. If you want me to visit your company, your organization, or your church to assist you in developing your leadership team. Thank you for joining in. God bless you.